We will start, please, with Candy. Hi, everybody. Hi, Peter. Hi, My name is Candy Hi. from Candy Palooza. It's Hi. great to speak with you this morning. Yeah, thanks. Same here. So um, tell us a little bit about how it was to come back and bring Ralphie back to us. Well, it's been a while. We're <laughs> nearly 40 years. So I think it was definitely felt like the right time. And for me, the right way in was, you know, the excitement of exploring Ralphie as a parent with his own family. Mm -hmm. And, you know, the idea as a kid that you, all you really care about is the perfect Christmas gift. But then as a parent, you kind of want Christmas to be perfect. Right. Um, and that's, I think, a big shift that, you know, when you grow up, that's sort of what you want for your own family. Um, mm -hmm. And so from a narrative perspective, that was exciting to want to explore. And the idea of going home and all that represents for those of us that have gone back to childhood homes, you know, it's a, it's a weird feeling sometimes, you know, and a good feeling and it evokes a lot of memories and it felt like sort of the right vehicle, the right way to bring up now 39 years of memories of the movie. And I think the passing of the parent, you know, is a real kind of landmark relatable idea. Um, and Ralphie was so close to his dad that the idea of having to step into kind of that role now puts a lot of pressure on him. Right. Beautiful. Thank you so much. Yeah, for sure. Amanda, go ahead. Hi, Peter. I'm Amanda from Guide for Geek Moms. Thank you for talking Hello, with Amanda. us today. Yeah, for I sure. Really, I really enjoyed the film. It was such uh, nostalgia and seeing all the cast come back, you know, the original cast and some new ones, right? They had Julie Haggerty replacing uh, your mom, Parker. So I was just Correct. wondering how it was uh, working with her and having her on the film. Well, it, yeah, Julie's fantastic. I mean, you think back to Airplane, one of the most iconic comedic roles, right? For, um, <laughs> for someone in history, she's so funny and so personable. And it was like, you know, when you're on location and you're away from your own families, you do, I know you guys probably hear this from people, but you kind of do become your own family because it's long, it's far away. It's, it's a very long commitment and she was just lovely and it was very easy to be able to act with her. We also had the luxury of being able to rehearse, which is not, which has for some reason been taken away from our business. Actors don't get really a lot of rehearsal time on movies anymore. It's just budget cuts. It's short. You're supposed to jump in day one. It's like, that's your mom, that's your kid and action. And you, there's sort of no, like, oh, we're family. We should have a little bit of chemistry here. So a lot of people try to get it off camera, but we were able to use that time to really develop a bond with each other. And, and that, and that was nice. And she's just a very calming energy, very comforting, um, very confident, um, very giving. So, um, so she was really, really lovely to work with. Thank you. Tessa, go ahead. Hey, Peter, I'm Tessa with Mama's Geeky. Thank you so much for taking the time today to talk. Hello, Tessa. About yeah, my pleasure. Uh, I'd love to know what it was like just to get back together with everyone. You talk about it being like a family on set. How was that reunion and seeing each other again? Well, very, yeah, it was very important to try to, to get all the original cast back, all the kids, you know, I don't know, we might be one of the first, certainly that's this long to do it. Um, it was, I asked them, you know, and I, I, I watched them and they, they said it was, it was very, it was very emotional for them um because there's such a great history on this movie and coming back and i think walking through the sets the design you know when we did the exterior where we built um the house that ralphie grew up in that whole street we built all those structures we built 11 structures there and the bumpus house next door and these were big and they weren't scheduled all on the same day but i called and they were all in their you know in their hotels and i said you guys got to get down here like this is unbelievable and they came down and walked around and it was complete deja vu. Like they're, you know, you're right back on set. You're right back there. And I think for them, it was more emotional than they expected. It's fun. It's great. You're there to work. There's long hours, but I think the emotion that was underneath it. And it's interesting because, you know, I think our movie is comedic, but there's some emotion that sneaks up on you in the third act of this one that, you know, kind of starts getting to you. Um, and I think that's just a result of kind of everyone together, what 
you know, the movies take on a little bit of a life of their own sometimes and just sort of what the movie was. Thank you so much. Yeah, for sure. But I, I tell you, it was a lot of fun too. I mean, we had a great time. Uh, Monica? Hi, Peter. My name is Monica from My Life is a Journey. And my question is, um, in this movie, you kind of save Christmas. Have you ever saved Christmas uh, for your nephews <laughs> yeah. or your family? <laughs> Probably almost ruined Christmas. Um, it might be my first chance to save it. Um, I was a pretty, was a pretty rambunctious little guy and um, younger, that's for sure. Uh, I remember one time I, we, our tradition was to come down and we could hope so our parents could sleep in. I'm sure many of you do this, put the stockings out, let the kids go tackle those so you can get a few more winks. Uh, I think I, I was in trouble for something leading into Christmas. I remember there was a piece of coal in mine and it really got my attention and I was shocked. Now there's a happy ending, don't worry. It was a holy call. Then my parents gave me gifts and filled it up, but it was a kind of funny moment <laughs> to have the cliched piece of coal. Um, but no, I, I, I think I, it's it's nice to play a character that saves Christmas. I think it's a fun, it's why I like Christmas movies. You know, they're it's a pretty dynamic time. We're forced into rooms and spaces with people that sometimes we're not always around, some that we love more than others some that we like less than others, uh, but it gives us a chance to sometimes reconcile the, the years business or the many years of history or business or things. And, you know, I, I like that idea. It's a time to be reflective um, about, you know, the new year opens new beginnings and how things went this year. Um, and so I like the end message of the movie that, you know, in trying to define Christmas, it's just the idea that there's, love laughter and life in the house again and that was the ultimate christmas present for the parkers that year and, and i think a, a relatable one for most years it was a beautiful message beautiful movie thank oh, you oh thank you very much appreciate it thank you heather hi peter i'm heather with pink ninja blog thank you for having us today hi. yeah for sure um, there was so much packed into the film. Um, there was a lot of laughs. We had some tears at our house. Mm -hmm. I was just wondering, do you have any fond memories or a fond memory of Derek, pardon, Darren McGavin that you could share with us? Oh, for sure. You know, this movie is very much, I think, genuinely an homage to the old man character and, and really kind of to him. He was as knowledgeable, as welcoming, as gracious to me as you could ever ask for from any actor um, and was such a veteran that he knew about every aspect of filmmaking um and sometimes just little problems of maybe rigging something you know on a set or trying you know, you know there's lights and this stuff around um he could be in a conversation with someone and overhear the lighting department debating how to fix something and he would turn and say oh just see stand it from the bottom swing it over the top you'll be fine and then they'd kind of shoot uh, yeah oh yes yes and he was completely right from any small thing to anything he was giving, he was gracious, he was loving um, and fun to work with. And like the energy that he brings on screen in that original, you know, is was super contagious and you could feel it. So people like that are very easy to act with because they're bringing so much to you. Um, so I can't say enough great things about him. Um, and it was really a joy to not only kind of have this movie very much homage to him, but also Ralphie having those, you know, that sense of loss with him, but also being able to reconcile that and kind of remember his dad forever in that light. Absolutely. Thank you. Thank you. Tobin, go ahead. Hi there, Peter. This is Tobin Walsh. I'm the good, bad dad. And I hey, feel like as, <laughs> as the only guy on the call here who's infiltrated the mom blogger set again, <laughs> I must do this. I'm going to double dog. No, no, no. Triple dog dare you to tell us that you must have been pitched a sequel or a reboot of this film before. So why after 40 years? Why now? Why this? Yeah, well, for sure. There's been, you know, I think a lot of bad ideas and people want to anytime something successful, people want to, you know, try to monetize off that. Uh, and so you can't help it. But this movie has gotten into more sacred not even fandom but kind of sacred territory um for me and i know for the fan base so to tackle it you got to get it right um 
you have to at least feel like you're trying to get it right and give a thousand percent to get it right. And so, you know, a lot of pieces need to line up, I think, for that. Um, and particularly with the way in that we've talked about, like, sure, people had asked or pitched or suggested, and it was like, Ugh, no, thanks. Just there was no good way or, or anything inspiring for me. I had produced the musical, which went to Broadway, which we did, um, which was great. And I enjoyed that. And it's still franchised out. And that was a way to take the youthful characters and do kind of song and dance with them. That was inspiring to me at the time. It's the only thing I've ever done. And so I think as a parent, you know, the ideas we've been talking about of the way in passing of the parent, having your own children, that felt like, all right, this is ripe enough to, to approach Ralphie. And, you know, I think had we not felt good, we just wouldn't have, wouldn't have done it. All right. I think you got it right. Thank you. Thanks. <laughs> Appreciate it. Thank you. C, go ahead. Hi, Peter. Thank you so much for being here with us. My name is C. I am with What C Says. Um, I My question is, so just to kind of go piggyback off of Tobin's question, how important was it to follow the same kind of sense of style of the old film um, to kind of bring it, to kind of bring nostalgia, but also bring kind of a new generation to, to A Christmas Story? To me, completely, um, completely important. Like it was sort of everything. And I think the word we use most was tone. Like you look at that original, it's got such an interesting tone. It, it was just hard to put your finger on, hard to say it, but like you hear it or you see it and it just feels uniquely like that. And it's not really like anything else. So I think we worked hard and, you know, that family is not, it, it's not the sort of Disney perfect family. It's not, you know, Mike and Carol Brady. Um, but it's a real family and it's a loving family and you don't feel that family's in jeopardy, but it feels real because there's, yeah, the voices get raised and it's, they can be hard on each other, but there's right. It feels like all of our families. It feels like true and loving. And so I think there's an irreverent tone to it. So those elements you want to get right. And we were able to adapt. We were able to get access to a lot of the stories that Gene Shepard wrote. So Gene Shepard wrote the original source material, which was a series of short stories that Christmas Story was based on. He wrote a lot of other books. So being able to get those books and write a lot of his words really put us back because he just has a, you listen to how that narration is written. It's just such fascinating ways of putting things or interesting examples looked at me like I had lobsters crawling out of my ears. Just the way he phrases things is so awesome. So to get access to that, I think helped also supplant us all in there and it's funny because i remember the original my character had some dialogue not a ton but so much of it was the narration you had to react and i remember the director would read it to me off camera and i was like man i hope this works this is so weird like i never done anything like that so on set here i had someone read all that narration so that i could have something to play and that was kind of a comforting familiar thing where just hearing that familiar voice and some of his great writing that we were able to pull straight from the books also helped. And this is weird, I'll just these long pauses in the movie where I'm thinking something and the world's going on. So I kind of needed that on set. I hope Thank that answers you. your question. I kind of yes, went off. Yes, you did. Attention. You did. Okay. Thank you so much. Sure. Lorena. Hi, Peter. I'm Lorena from El Riz Adventures. Hi. And just like I'd say you were dropping so many gems uh, during your voiceovers, you know, with these great quotes about like lessons and rules of life. And like some of them were, you know, to me that stuck out. I like when you say uh, laughter was the sharpest weapon in the arsenal because sometimes yeah. thinking about kids, you know, that laughter can really hurt. And um, of course, like, you know, the the classic quotes like it's the thought that counts i, I really i re was really connecting with all these <laughs> was there a favorite one that stuck out to you that you were saying oh that's interesting yeah um um i i i like the idea that um i think the carolers and that there's two sort of subscribed schools on caroling and one truly really can't stand them and one likes them you know what what was fun in this and you're saying even laughter, like the, the cool thing about the original in this movie is the set pieces aren't big 
massive set. They're the most mundane things. It's like trying to get a tree, trying to cook a turkey, just going to going shopping at the store. But you're eventizing these things that we all have to do, these more mundane kind of things. So even the idea of carolers coming to your door, like it happens to all of us, we get them. But accentuating it to like handheld camera war footage for the mom, like she's literally in a war. And then for Sandy, she thinks it's like the most amazing thing that she's seen and she grew up on it. So I like the idea of sort of eventizing and using the words like you're saying to give perspective to it, but making a, a mountain out of something that would be just as simple as eating food <laughs> or just listening to a song, feel like they're taken into sort of epic. And even for him going to buy a tree, now he thinks these people are going to hustle you. You got to hustle them first. You don't know what you're, and the kids are like, wait, just buy a tree, dad. But it's, everything is heightened. And I kind of like that, that it's the simple things that are heightened. I like that. And actually the carolers uh, scene was one of my favorite scenes. Yeah, it's crazy. <laughs> well, really. But I, I mean, it's how some people feel. There is definitely a divide. People are either completely creeped out by them or they really like them. It seems to be one of the two. Yeah, I like that there was that difference in like the celebration. Because I know that happens with like my husband and I. We have different ways of like our Yeah, tradition. exactly. So I like that in between the families, like you, you show that like, you know, someone can hate something and someone could totally love it because I could totally yeah. relate. Lord knows we all don't agree on the same stuff, but that's okay. We can still love each other. Yeah, thank you. I love that. Yeah, thank you. Shell, go ahead. Hi, Peter. I'm Shell with Not Quite Susie Homemaker. And first, I want to thank you for being here and for doing this movie. I have not laughed or cried this hard in a movie in a very, very long time. Oh, so I, I did not expect to get emotional over Scott Farkas, of all people. When you yeah. were reading the script, is there something that stuck out that surprised you, that took you off guard, that you weren't expecting? Um, well, I, as I said, I, developed, I co-wrote the story in the script with Nick and with Clay. So we were kind of wanted to bake this from the ground up and um you know that's one of without giving away too much but i think you know people know that scut is back in but that you know that turn i think and the sort of surprising turn in that um were things that we wanted to you know i think we were pleasantly surprised at the emotion maybe there was a little more emotion that came kind of from it but wanted to tread on sort of ideas because I think it's a pretty emotional journey for Ralph to go through. So it was important, I think, in baking it to say, all right, again, we don't want to be saccharine. We know we can't be Christmas story universe, very anti that, you know, from the filmmakers, the headline, but can we have some genuine emotion that maybe you would have moving through things and what that's like going home and seeing people you haven't seen and uh, not measuring up to who you wanted to be. And then, you know, maybe having the chance to in the end. So I think the emotion was a was a component that we really did want. Um, but I think it, I mean, if anything, I started getting scared. I was like, oh, there's a lot of emotion in this, but I think it's okay because it's balanced with the comedy. So when we saw the first cut, it was surprising, I think, in a good way that people were laughing, but they were also getting moved by it, which was nice. And that's what you want in a movie, I think, you know, escape kind of what's going on and hopefully have it move you on some, you know, on some different levels. Well, you hit the perfect balance. Thank you. Oh, well, thank you very much. Thank you all for joining us. That's all the time we have for this round table. Have a wonderful rest of your day. Thank you all.